Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not not normal. Does that dog have an owner over there? <laughs> Looking out the window. Oh, wait, Alex dog is about to around. snatch a dog off the street. We got two dogs now. <laughs> no, I think those people just let their dog out of the front yard. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, excuse me. Good thing Bailey's not looking out the window. Yeah, otherwise this, do- this podcast would be nothing but dog barking. <laughs> dog barking podcast. <laughs> Soccer situation. Yeah. Oh, Todd, do you know? Do you know the show Puppy Pals? No. The little kids show. No. Oh man, I just found out last night listening to a podcast that Harlan Williams created that. This is a cartoon show. It's like a huge kids, like a like children's show. Puppy. Pals. It's a, a cartoon show of like uh dogs that like solve mysteries and shit. And Harlan Williams. Harlan Williams is like the creator of it. That he told the story dog. on a podcast the other night. It, uh, I was watching that Chad and JT go yeah. deep with uh, Harlan Williams. And they were, he was telling the story. I was like, that's unbelievable. I thought he was joking at first, but then he went into like real detail of it. Oh my and God. I was like, no, he's serious. Do the parents of the kids that watch that show know about that? I know. He's a weird man. That guy's a deviant. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> awesome, dude. Oh, I love him. Harlan's my favorite. I love him. But he's yeah, he's a weird guy. He's a very strange man. I watched some very of that strange podcast, man. but not all of it. But yeah, he kept going off in weird directions. Yeah, that's what he does. Unforeseen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's hard to... It takes a specific type of mind to keep up with him. Yeah. There's like a few comedy, uh, comedians that you clearly know him well enough. Yeah. They just roll with it and play yeah. the game. Yeah. Those guys, you could see them taking a beat every time he said something. They were like... They would take a beat. And yeah, because like, you can't tell if he's serious or he's fucking around. Okay, or, yeah. yeah. And then, and then, they yeah. Go. Yeah. then you just got to realize everything he does is a bit. Yeah. And you just got to play along with it. Yeah, exactly. It's never ending bits. Yep. You know what else is a never ending bit? Jordan Pickford's career. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a bit that just keeps on giving us How's laughs. How's that for a transition? Um, right into the pod. Yeah. We just uh, we just finished watching the Merseyside Derby, Liverpool hosting Everton. Um, it was a nervy one going into the game for a lot of obvious reasons for Liverpool fans. Uh, pre-match, I think a lot of the commentators were picking Everton to kind of um, to win this one, and it was tough to argue with. You know, just the way we played it. it we couldn't have played any worse the last few games. Yeah, your teams looked really disjointed, and then Everton, Everton put in a performance <laughs> against Arsenal. So Everton looked resurgent. Yeah, it looked uh, like the recipe was there for disaster. Yeah. Um, instead, it kind of looked like we went back in time five years to like the early Klopp years. Um, yeah, that was the kind of performance it was. It wasn't great or perfect by any means, but all the effort was there. Um, there was some hallmark stuff like we like we dominated possession in the first half, but we weren't really scoring, um, creating some kind of half chances. But then we got our goal from their best chance, you know, just lightning quick break. Um, that reminded me of the early clock days. Um, yeah, the all out blitz attack. Yeah, super blitz. <laughs> um, yeah. It was it was pretty sick. Uh, Darwin is so fast on the ball, dude. He's, yeah, he was outpacing Everton defenders with the ball. You know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't slow down at all when he's carrying it. Oh, it's crazy. And then at that pe- at that pace, at top sprinting speed, he hit a, that beautiful cross. Um, and uh, again, um, uh, there was an element of Jordan Pickford hilarity to it. Both <laughs> both Salah and Gakpo were steaming through the middle. Um, into the box to get on the end of the cross. Um, and Pickford really, very early, chose to commit to Gakpo um, furthest to his left, <laughs> even though Salah was dead center, uh, to poke home into an empty net. It was a funny finish to yeah. a, a lethal counterattack. Yeah. Yeah, what was he doing there? Um, like, There's a weird judgment to make yeah. that early for a keeper. Yeah. Like you, I mean, is it? I don't know. Staying on his line would have been the right choice. Yeah, yeah. He, he tends to overthink things against Liverpool, which is why the fans were singing Divacarigi's name. Um, yeah, that was really funny. And just Google Jordan Pickford Divacarigi if you haven't. Yeah. If you don't know, 
hilarious moments. One of my favorite moments in footy history. Uh, but anyway, um, this game felt like going back in time. Liverpool were clearly the better. We kind of just bodied Everton. Um, it didn't – yeah, it looked like a – Routine win. Yeah, like a routine win, honestly. Yeah, um, which is a rarity in a derby game. Tons of bright spots in terms of personnel. Um, Gakpo got off the mark, looked great. Um, in another move that looked kind of like vintage Klopp Liverpool um, in the sense that it involved both fullbacks, the buildup. Yeah. Um, both Trent and and Robertson Klopp loves played, a fullback. Played uh, key passes in the build up to that to that goal, um, and uh, I thought Robertson in particular had a standout game. Tons of energy. Um, <laughs> he he also he uh, um, had some fun at the expense of Pickford as well. Um, oh, that was an amazing moment. Ki- just kicking a ball away after the whistle. Um, that just absolutely set both Pickford and. Theon Greyjoy counter Cody off. They both <laughs> screamed in the face of Robertson, who was just <laughs> he was laughing directly in their face. It was very funny. Yeah, it was, I mean that's classic Robertson. He's such a troll. At first glance, I couldn't tell if he was like, kind of joking with Cody because uh-huh. it was kind of from the back of his head view. And yeah. then when they showed the other replay, you could tell he was actually being like, "Fuck you!" Like, yeah. screaming in his when face. When Cody went in, I didn't know how it was either because I didn't know if they had a previous relationship. When Cody yeah, was I mean at they Liverpool. obviously played at Liverpool. Yeah, 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 I thought it could have been a friendly, but no, Cody clear as day said, "Fuck off!" Yeah, it was. Yeah. he was like spitting with rage. Yeah, which is exactly. <laughs> and how Robinson I see was him. just laughing. Yeah, yeah, that was a perfect exchange for me. Um, anyway, um, surprisingly good Liverpool win. Um, I was already delusionally looking at the table, being like, you know, Alex, top four is not impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Did I not say that? Immediately. Ago? Immediately, immediately after the okay, game. Not immediately. Immediately after the game. I was crunching some numbers. I was looking at the table. Yeah. I, I mean, you're figuring, not wrong. I was figuring some stuff out. Results got to go your hand. way, but. You know, yeah. it's it's Newcastle and Tottenham that are mostly standing in the way, assuming all the other outliers fall away. You know? Yeah. I mean, Tottenham... Saying Brentford is going to fall away is also assuming a lot, though. Yeah, Brentford actually look legit. Yeah. Um, But I would expect Tottenham to fall. I would not be surprised at all if we surpassed Tottenham. Oh, no. That that could be easy. They're a mess this year. Yeah. They can't can't put a (laughs) run of results together at all. Um, But anyway, uh, good game. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that was a good game. Yeah. Liverpool back. Good, solid. Yeah. Liverpool back. (laughs) All right, yeah. So this um, rounded out the weekend. Earlier in the weekend, there were some less good games. Do you want to talk about any particular one? Yeah, man. I think we could jump right into this. Speaking of Tottenham, we yeah. talked about this last week. Tottenham being oh, prone yeah. to a, a bad result after a big win. Yeah, that's right. We that's said right. you said it. You said it last week, yeah. and there you go. They did it exactly that. Lester thumped them four one. Todd Stradamus, <laughs> Tottenham beat City. <laughs> And I was like, well, you know what Tottenham loves to do more than anything else is lose a fucking game after a huge win. Yep, and they did. They got, <laughs> they got smoked by Leicester. Leicester looked like the Leicester of old. Yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff. Ripped them apart. Very funny. Did Harry Kane win any more individual awards in that game, though? Uh, probably. He probably got the goal. Probably penalty. Most penalties in Premier League history, maybe. <laughs> and now Benton Core got the goals. Oh, Benton Core. That's right. Okay. Fulham beat um relegation candidates forest 2-0 uh that game was highlighted by a william banger absolute banger what a shot that was yeah um far right side sharp angle across goal just like ricocheting off the inner top corner yeah perfectly placed into that corner yeah it's pretty cool stuff when Uh, the ball pings off the frame like that yeah and you you (laughs) see like the angle there's defenders in the way it's like has to be perfectly placed in that top corner, and it was yeah, that was a great shot. Um, That's old school, William rolling back the years. Yeah, uh, Fulham's really f- incredible season continues. They're sitting in seventh place right now. You know, Brentford. Or we talk about Brentford a lot. I think we have kind of an early soft spot for me for Brentford, but it's good to see Fulham right up in there too, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really happy that they are seeming. They're like they're definitely staying up. You know, like yeah. I. I was worried Fulham was going to continue this yo-yo back mm-hmm. and back and forth for too long because I always liked them as a club in the league. They always play an attractive football. The cottage is the best. Yeah, like it's it's yeah, it's so good to see them doing well. Yeah, you know, um, 
I, you know, I was just fantasizing about Liverpool leapfrogging all these teams to get Champions League. But I look at that little cluster, um, sixth, seventh, and eighth, it's Brighton, Fulham, Brentford. Yeah. I, I love uh, every one of those teams I'm a fan of right now. Yeah. Yeah, they all play uh, entertaining football and have likable players. Yeah, they're doing a great job running a team on a budget that other teams would tell you it's impossible, you know, to do. Yeah. And they're just killing it, dude. Super cool managers, impressive. bunch of good managers, too. Yeah. Um, also, I'll say three of my favorite stadiums, actually. The Amex yeah. is a classy, like, kind of small market club stadium on the yeah, south coast. Yeah, it's like a coast, small like, modern market. Yeah, it's really yeah, beautiful. mid-market stadium. The cottage is obviously iconic and classic. Yeah. Um, and then Brentford's community stadium is one of my favorite modern stadiums. It's yeah, it's super cool. Really, really cool. Yeah. We've talked about that many times, too. Yeah. Yeah, what a what a cool little bunch of, of teams in there. I try not to be patronizing. That I guess I am, though. <laughs> but I like those teams genuinely. Yeah, no, it's it's good to have some like mid table clubs that are gonna be. I hate when it's like a bunch of Stokes in the mid table that are just stomping around and staying up. Like I like it, these teams are all playing good football. Yeah, they're a little physical, but they ha- you know they have to be in defensive against the big teams. Yeah, that was the thing that when we talk about the good old days of the Premier League, you know, uh, Arsenal versus Man United, and you know Chelsea coming on the right, yeah. Um, we love that era, but that was the shit thing about that era. Yeah. Is all the mid table and lower li- uh, table teams were fucking savages that barely yeah. played football at all. Yeah. They just kick you all over the pitch. Yeah. And then just hoof the ball forward and try and get corners or penalties or throw ins. Yeah. Like, the Premier League has always claimed to be the greatest league in the world, but it was fucking savage and stuff outside of the top six back then. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a nightmare. A, a lot of ugly games. Yeah. It was not a super entertaining until you got like the top teams playing each other. It was not fun to watch. Yeah, it's a pretty recent revelation to have these promoted teams coming up and playing like ambitious, free flowing football. That's not how it used to be. Yeah, not at all. Those teams that ever came, they'd always come up and go straight back down. Right, exactly. With like the lowest point total ever. Yeah, if the, they came the up Swan and tried teams, to play. You know, the, yeah. the, the romantic, yeah, relegation or promotion teams that you just love and then they just they disappear. And yeah. Happen. I feel like Wolves did that once. I feel like there was a couple times these teams have come up and been like, they ran away with the championship and they come up and try and play the same way. Norwich City does that all the time. They come up playing free-flowing football and then get smashed by everybody in the league. Yeah, I would say Norwich is kind of probably the archetype of that right now, the Yo-Yo Club. Yeah, yeah. They're always very fun to watch. Yeah, I think they set the goal scoring record in the championship recently. Yeah. They were just phenomenal. The Barcelona, the championship, came up and were literally the worst team the Prem's ever seen. Yeah, they got absolutely <laughs> destroyed. Um, they could not play that football in that in the Premier League level. Hi, baby. Um kind of relevant in the in the chase for the Champions League here. Uh Bournemouth won, Newcastle won. Yeah. Newcastle are bordering on crisis if you know if depending on what their ambitions were for the season yeah if they were banking on champions league then yeah obviously sitting in the top four in february is great for them but their last five draw 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 win draw Um, yep dropping a lot of points yeah um the teams around them in the table are definitely picking up more than that so yeah there's cause for concern yeah, I would be definitely worried if I was a Newcastle fan, and I was super excited about the potential of Champions League with that money in the summer. They they, they have to be getting excited, but if they miss out on Champions League, that's going to hurt. Yeah. Um, Coming from an Arsenal fan who missed out on Champions League last year by, yeah. like, a couple points. Oh, uh, Missing out on it late in the season is tough. That's a real kick in the balls. Yeah, we stumbled hard in the last couple games. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a heartbreak, so Newcastle fans. Yeah, I was I watch remember, out. I remember like trying not to say anything to you about that. I was like, man, that was a that was a very kind of Tottenhamish collapse. You guys, it was did bad. It, last it was year. bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a brutal collapse. Yeah, we should have strolled the top four. The position we were in with like five or six games left, we should have easily walked into the top four, and it just fell apart. Yeah, heartbreaking stuff. Yeah, let's Speaking- hope we're not on that run right now. <laughs> This episode of Soccer Situations is brought to you by Littlefoot Coffee. I mean, what can I say about Littlefoot Coffee? Um, They're not just friends of the pod. They're 
family of the pod, quite literally. Um, Alex started Littlefoot years ago after more than a decade of roasting experience, um, roasting coffee for some of the hottest, most fashionable, and uh, most importantly, tasty specialty coffee roasters in America. My favorite thing about it is that it's just really high-grade coffee without a drop of pretense. You're not going to find a bunch of weird, savory notes that the roaster is passing off as intentional. It's just really sweet, comforting flavors that everybody wants in their coffee. And now, for a limited time only, you can get 15% off at littlefootcoffee.com. Promo code SITUATIONS. Once again, you can get 15% off at littlefootcoffee.com using the promo code SITUATIONS. I was going to say, speaking of heartbreak, are you ready to talk about Brentford Brentford Arsenal? Arsenal Arsenal Brentford. The Man City agenda. Yeah, we thought it was the Arsenal agenda all year, and now it turns out it's the Man City. It might, it might even be the Man United agenda. I think we agenda. got more allegations coming up against Man City right now. Yeah. Um, VAR suddenly forgot how to work the system. There's nothing more satisfying, right, and, and like super great, uh, the best feeling in the world, than dropping points in a really key game, and then the league immediately coming out and being like, yeah, we fucked up. Yep. Oh, our bad. Yeah. Oh, it's my bad. That's <laughs> oh, we'll punish him. We'll put him in ch- the championship for a couple games. That'll be enough punishment for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so annoying. I mean, Bri- Brighton got hard done as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Arsenal aren't the only ones that have had calls go against him. Right. But that was a pretty brutal one. Um, this one's tough because with those points dropped, that puts you into the window where... If you lose both matches against City, they they leapfrog you. Yeah. Yep. So now it's within their power to, in, to to do so. Yeah, to win the league. <laughs> it's in their hands now. It's, I mean, no, it's still in your hands. You just have to not lose both games against them. No. Don't pass. And the honestly, buck. I don't think I don't think we will lose both games against them. No, I think you could easily win both games against them. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Uh, not the best game to go into this game with. Well, next, not the best run to go into this game with. But. Yeah, it's really your first little fumble all season. Yeah. Everton and Brentford back-to-back. Yeah. Um, obviously, Everton is humiliating. That's a humiliating loss. That's going to really affect morale. <laughs> yeah, that um, one hurt, clearly. <laughs> you could see it in the boys playing against Brentford. They didn't have that confidence anymore. Right. Um no, nah, I mean I'm just I'm fucking with you, obviously, but yeah, um, yeah it's not an ideal way to head into this. Um, no, but I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about it as far as like a a theme for Arsenal. Uh, Brentford are a really good club. Like mm-hmm. they've been on an absolutely great. They've been on a tear in the league, scoring yeah. goals too. You caught Everton at literally the worst weekend you could have caught them all season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then Brentford's yeah, just cool. a good good team. Yeah. We should have, I mean, based on the call, we should have won the game 1-0, which would have been a great result, mm. even though Brentford deserved the draw, honestly. They, they were good enough to earn a point there, but uh, that should be one of those games that we scrap out 1-0. Yeah. And we're looking back at, at the end of the season saying that was huge. Right. Um, And it just, yeah, a little frustrating, though. Yeah. But Trossard's goal was nice. Yeah, it was. It was. Um. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens against City. I still think uh, I was shocked that Arteta didn't change the team at all. Yeah, you said that multiple Rest times. You were surprised by that. Rest some players. Maybe wake some players up mm. before the City game. Give them, uh, you know, shake them up a little bit and remind them that they don't just get to start all the time. Uh, yeah, but- yeah. I I think his train of thought was. He needs to prove that the Everton thing was just a one-off. Was that a fluke. wasn't really the team. It was just a fluke. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it kind of backfired a little bit on him. Um, but now now it's definitely going to make his life a lot harder on Wednesday to try and pick a team. Because, like, does he play Trossard now that he's scored the goal, came out and scored the goal? He's been right. effective in every appearance off the bench. Mm. Um, now he's giving himself a question for the City game. My guess is he probably sticks with the same 11. You think so? I think he's going to. Is that going to upset you? Uh, you don't think Sinchenko is going to get dropped to the bench? I guess it depends on how much he really believes in that system against City. Sure. You know, 
does he believe a back like a more traditional back four is going to be better against City, or does he think that Zinchenko can play that role where he floats into midfield? Um, honestly, I think Zinchenko has been frustrating the hell out of me. He frustrated the hell out of me in that Brentford game. Yeah, I see. It seemed like the game plan was to get him to contribute and mm-hmm. to control the game, but he was just not on. Not at he it. was finding space, but he was not doing anything with the ball. Hmm. And it was yeah, it was really frustrating. I was begging for Tierney to come on at some point, um, and I do think Trossard coming on on the left gave us more width and kind of changed things a little bit. But um, yeah, we'll see. It's gonna be definitely not going into this game as confident as I was a few days prior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, but I don't know. We've we've played well against them in the past. They are trying to trick us and say Holland's out. Yeah, classic mind games. Even though they were cruising 3-0 up against uh, yeah. Villa, and he get, came off, and they're like, oh, he's hurt. It's yeah. Like, or you're just, just resting giving him. him a rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or you just gave not. him 45 minutes off. Something tells me he'll play. Yeah, I believe he'll be there. Yep. No doubt in my mind. It's pretty classic. That's throwing it back old school mind games from a manager. Oh, speaking of classic manager mind games pep was also throwing him at the premier league uh finance fiduciary board you know? <laughs> he was like it doesn't matter what they say the team's already condemned he's like oh oh you've already lost pep oh, oh yeah he's being such a sad boy i know and so if like well if that's the case if you think it's it's over and you're guilty then why are you still there exactly. he said you would leave if they were guilty yeah time to go time to go crumble fall let's rip that team apart i'll take some of those players yeah, most definitely. Well, yeah. I mean, would I? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd poach one or two of those. On current form, I'd swap Salah for Mahrez. That, uh, that's for sure. Ooh, Mahrez. Yeah, I'd love a Mahrez. Killing it this we year. We actually need a little Saka backup. That'd be nice. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Relegate the hell out of City and give us some other players. I'll still take Darwin over Holland, though. I want Pep to stay long <laughs> enough, though, to give give uh, Arteta some sweet deals on his way out. <laughs> and then he can leave. <laughs> Once they get relegated. Yeah. Give me some, get us some fucking under the table deals on some of those players on your way out, Pep. That's pretty funny. You can uh, come be assistant manager to Arteta. What other games? Do, what have we? What have we missed? What have we missed? United beat Leeds. I think that was pretty uneventful. Yeah, I was excited because the two two draw midweek was was a exciting match. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that might be a good game. Um. But, yeah, it was a pretty easy win, it seemed like, for United. Yeah, I watched that game, and I, I don't recall much of it, to be honest. Yeah, it seemed like a pretty standard 2-0, like a couple goals here and there. Same with um, possession. City kind of casting aside Aston Villa 3-1, same deal. It was like, extremely routine. Yeah, that was a classic, like, City just dominant, controlling the game performance mm-hmm. over before half. And they were just, like, cruising after that. We didn't talk about West Ham and Chelsea. Um, what did I have to say about that? I know, like, um, I think I missed a little bit at the start of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you said that Chelsea looked dangerous as hell in the that's first right. 20 minutes. That's right. I just needed that little prompt reminder. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Chelsea came out of the gates, and all of their super expensive new signings were kind of firing and clicking. Um it looked like they had some chemistry for a little bit. Yeah, we finally got to see Joe Felix playing, really. Yeah, um, and he scored a sick goal. Yeah. But it all fell apart pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Team clearly lacking confidence and cohesion. Yeah, West Ham scored against the run of play, like really against the run of play. Yeah, Chelsea were dominating. Yeah. Um, and the game kind of just fell into a, a sloppy mess, like the yeah. Chelsea we've been seeing for the past few months after that. Yep. Yeah, they could never really get on the ball and like control the game. No. Um, Mudrick had a super ineffective game. He came yeah. off in about the 60th minute. Yeah, he did some like fancy dribbling, but he kept losing the ball in the final third. Um, was not really effective at all. Yeah, they were shutting him down pretty well. Um, he's unbelievably quick. And don't get me, I'm not definitely not discarding him. He looks really oh, he, dangerous. No, he's super player. young still, too. Yeah. He's, um, he's going to be dangerous. But yeah, he was not in that game. He wasn't, he wasn't there. Um, Enzo Fernandez had a good game. He yeah. unfortunately looks like he's kind of the real deal. It looks like that was actually a genuinely good signing by them. 
Yeah, his lofted through ball for the um, Zhao goal was really was really really nice. Yeah, yeah. They've. I mean, we've laughed at Chelsea for the ridiculous amount of forwards they've signed and the money they spent. Um, but they did sneakily sign some good, uh, like spine players as well. Yeah, I'm already kind of seeing that everyone was jumping the gun. I mean, we've said it multiple times on this pod now. Um, jumping the gun and laughing at Chelsea, I think. Oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. You can see the framework of what they're trying to do. Yeah. As we've said before, it all depends on them shipping, being able to ship players out. And yeah. if they struggle to do that, then this could all go, you know, tits up. Yeah, yeah. But um, – Which they will struggle. They're probably going to – the good, the thing is it's good um, – with Bully, they might – eat more contract mm-hmm. for some of these sales. Yeah. At least like maybe get some long-term loans out there and eat some of the, the, you know, contract or some of the money. Yeah. If he spent like this in January, God only knows what he has planned for the summer. Yeah. He spent so much. So what do he spent like four or 500 mil in January alone? I think, I think it was 600 mil us. I don't remember uh, Sterling, but it's wild. Yeah. Insane. Numbers. I think he spent more than the sum total of, Syria, ah, the Bundesliga and La Liga combined. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he outspent the other three all major Europe. European <laughs> leagues combined. It's, it's insane, disgusting. man. Yeah, it's wild yeah, stuff. Ruining the market. Um, well, I, I don't mean to keep complaining about it. It's probably tedious to hear. Um, the point is, I can see what he's trying to do, and yeah, and it seems like they've made some pretty canny moves. Um, yeah, and we'll see also how quickly did the Premier League officially close down the long-term contract loophole or are they UEFA did I think or maybe it was I don't remember but it has been shut it just wasn't effective immediately okay okay because I know they have a few that are snuck through yeah they snuck and through after that had been done yeah yeah so yeah um yeah we'll see we'll see what happens going forward they're definitely gonna have to sell some players um but they do seem like they have built a good spine or they're building a good spine they haven't done anything super impressive other than spl- – like, they've bought very obvious targets. Yeah, yeah. They've bought the most obvious targets. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, they've got a new director of football in. <laughs> this is something to be worried about. No, it was literally the joke was they literally tried to sign every player Arsenal was trying to sign. Yeah. <laughs> they, they went and signed all of them, basically. They bought the highest pl- profile players that were on the market at that moment. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're playing FIFA, you know. Right. You just have, like, oh, that guy's the best. I'm going to buy him right so in that regard, we don't really know how intelligent his reign, Bully's reign, is going to be moving forward. Yeah. I think he's made some good buys, if even if he spent too much. Um, but again, they were obvious, and that's could not, still backfire that's not too. Sustainable. All those players are still unproven talent in the yeah. league and young. Yeah, and regardless, so, even knows? if they all work out, that's what he did. This window is not something you can do every year. No, no, no chance. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, we'll see. We'll see what that project looks like. I have no idea. Moving I mean, forward. It, yeah. I'm assuming you can't do that every year and be within the law of the game. We'll see if uh, something actually happens to City. Right. If the laws of the game actually do stand. Right. Pictures, well, right. should we talk about uh, just general, the VAR situation? Yeah. I <laughs> didn't do... I don't have a comprehensive roundup of all the controversial controversial oh, yeah. incidents. I mean, we just yeah, we can. I, the one we know obviously was the Arsenal Brentford, right? Um, and, and there we, was the handball against Chelsea. Handball too. against Chelsea, yeah, that was definitely should have been reviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what what the Brighton one was. Do you know what the Brighton one call no. was? No, I don't. I didn't see that one. Yeah, the, I know every like Brighton had a call that was wrong. Um, but the point is. These fucking Brits can't use basic video technology. They don't understand the concept of watching a slow motion video and using common sense to see what happened. It's yeah. somehow above these fucking Islanders brain yeah. power. So the Brighton one was a wrongly drawn line and on an offsides call That's by the VAR right. official. I heard them talking about and that. And it cost Brighton a goal. Unbelievable. Yeah. Did they draw the line but, from the wrong defender? Is that what happened? I or think did they so. just fail to draw the line? No, I think they drew it from the wrong defender. They drew it in the wrong spot. Unbelievable, dude. Yeah. Yep. Um, luckily, the guy who did that was supposed to be VAR for your match today. That's right. And our match on Wednesday. Yeah, and he got the boot. And he got the boot for that. So at least there's that. <laughs> um, and Howard Webb 
is back in the mix. Dude, Webb's back overseeing refereeing quality standards. Yeah, he's calling the boys in. He's mad. Oh, my Teacher's God. Teacher's mad. Dude, these new, he's like a bald new era head. Prem fans don't know what they're in for, dude. If we're going to get a new generation of Howard Webb's, do you think he's going to get back on the pitch, dude? I hope so. He's going to be like a... Uh, Lead from the front, Howard. Yeah, like a wrestler that's like <laughs> retired, you know, and they're talking about him, and then you hear his theme music come back. <laughs> come, and Howard Webb comes running Everyone, out, dude. Everyone's like, oh, looking up at the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> no way. You Just, know, if he's back and starts refereeing again, it's the Man United agenda. Oh, yeah. We know what the agenda oh, is yeah, then. It's true. That makes sense. That's as, why they're bringing him back in the loop. As much as Webb was a much more competent referee than anyone we have he today. He still loved Man United. He was a Man United referee, dude. Yeah, he was like, a big, clear Man United fan. <laughs> that shit was not in my head. No, it was so obvious. Not all of it, anyway. No. Yeah. It was so obvious. Um,. I am interested to see. Obviously, like right now, they can't like they can't do a whole lot mid season. But like, what, I mean, he's just gonna call him, give him all a slap on the wrist, tell him to stop being fucking idiots. Yeah, is he gonna be like um, what Sean Dyche is to Everton? He is to referees. Yeah, he's, he's gonna ban snoods and hats from yeah. referee training. He's gonna tell him to <laughs> man up. Yeah, man up. And start paying attention. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, he's going to be – yeah, exactly. No he's bringing hats. that old-school mentality back to refereeing. That's great. Hopefully, I mean, something has to happen. It's an absolute nightmare. Yeah, for people that haven't been watching the game long-term – and by long-term, I mean more than a decade uh, – the quality of, of refereeing really has declined noticeably in the past decade. Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. Um, and obviously, VAR coming in should have should've should've helped it. that. But they really. But they don't know how to use it. Just oh, they just overthink it. Yeah. And they they set all these weird sort of like classic British people stuff. Yeah. The verbiage of the rules is so obtuse that yeah. there's no. It's not black and white still. Yeah. You know no, what it's, I mean? It's all gray area still. Yeah. They they, they go so to just, video review and they still leave it obtuse somehow. Yeah, and they leave it. Yeah, then it's still up to human <laughs> error to decide what's happening. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and they never mind the fact that they also include the loophole that the ref also has the right to just disregard the video if he wants. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. they often choose to do. Yeah, if it's not a clear and obvious error or whatever, he can just be like, ah, nah, I'm, I'm good, I'm right. The clear and obvious error is the worst line of the ambiguous verbiage. Yeah. Because what is clear and obvious? I think every single football every fan error has, is seen, clear and obvious. has seen at least one that they think <laughs> is really obviously a mistake that doesn't get called back. Always, you know? yeah. Because it ends up being a referee old boys club of one ref not wanting to embarrass the other one. So mm -hmm. they don't want to call it an obvious mistake, you know? Yeah, they don't want to be shitting on their colleagues constantly. Right. Anyway. Instead of just letting the system work how it's supposed to. Honestly. You know, we watched the Super Bowl last night, or at least I watched some of it. Um and that was my one takeaway is like, first of all, fuck the NFL and the 45 minutes of American fucking military propaganda that, was so ridiculous. that goes on before. Holy what shit. the hell? We tuned in thinking the game was going to kick off at 630. We tuned in a little after six and we got inundated with the longest, most batshit insane stream of American, American prop propaganda. propaganda that I have ever seen. It was it was so it was much, never ending. It's so much crazier than I expected. Yeah. Yeah, it was like all super patriotic, and then it like super flipped religious to like too? yeah, and super religious, and then it flipped to like all about empowering black people. Well, then they would have like yeah, like they had a whole section of they, that. Yeah, they would have like little kind of token pro black moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was so bizarre, insane, bizarre stuff. television. Yeah, but anyway, then the game kicked off, and I hated that most of that too. But the one takeaway yeah. was is like at least they know how to use video replay accurately in the NFL. Yeah, they need to poach some NFL yeah. replay analysts. <laughs> And, yeah. and show them how to manage it in the prem. You know, I was listening to today. I listened to Ars Blogs, uh, the Ars Cast today, and they were saying, like, you have video coaches at every club in the league mm -hmm. that are professional video coaches all throughout Europe who all they do is study film and watch film. Why does this person have to be a referee? <laughs> That's a good point. Put a video professional up there. That knows how to work cameras, knows how to work angles, like knows how to like do this shit, and they know the rules of the game. It's not that hard. It's just offside calls and shit, you know. Yeah. The only time it's a difference is maybe a red card. Right. But then it's like call the ref over to the monitor, let the ref decide it. Right. You know, like you don't need a ref 
to be up in the booth. You need somebody who knows how to run a video. Who are the officials um, in the NHL traditionally in Toronto? Are they referees? No, I think it's a whole video official crew. They it's just, like, like a they dedicated stay there. crew. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that they're, they're not referees. They're like corporate officials. Yeah, basically. Yeah, they're like NHL officials, video officials that just stay there. Okay, like that's their job. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I know just about anything would be better than the way they handle it now. Yeah, it's horrible now. It's, it's embarrassing. Absolutely actually. horrible. It's been a nightmare all season, and obviously, as an Arsenal fan right now, it's affecting me more than than some other clubs. Hmm. And it's like I could be whining about it, but like. It is a big deal. We just two points dropped in a title race against City. I mean, you know more than ever as Liverpool fan tough. how tight those races are. Crucial. This could be an absolutely crucial two points dropped yeah. over a bad call. Yep. Um, so the frustrating stuff. Um, hopefully they can actually figure it out. I don't have much faith they will, at least not this season. Um. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Come on. Uh, maybe in the next five years. That's optimistic. Yeah. Dude, these guys, these people only just realized that Brexit was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. Um, should we look ahead to next week? Oh, yeah. Let's take a little Or, peek. I mean, midweek. Is anyone else playing midweek or is it just us? I think it's just y'all. Just us. Yeah. Arsenal City. So do we do you want to dive into that or should we run through the weekend and come back to it? Uh, well, actually, you play at the weekend too. Yeah, that because yeah. that's a replay. That's right. Yeah, we're making up. That's a game. not a scheduled game. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a replay, and obviously it's weighty. So I, let's let's tackle this this um, sort of looming shadow on Wednesday that I know you're even more stressed about than you're letting on. Oh yeah, super stressed about this one. Um, I mean, going into it, um, obviously City in better form than we are. They they just had the easy stroll win over Villa. Mm-hmm. And we've struggled our last two games to score. Um, let's let's throw out immediate form because <laughs> Bailey, you behave yourself back Bailey, there. Um, what were we saying? Uh, oh yeah, I'll I was talk about say, So let's throw out recent form because in games this big, it, it truly does not matter. Yeah, you know that's what true. I mean? yeah. it's not going to affect. It's it. a whole different level of play, right? And it, intensity. In fact, this game hanging over your heads could have been the effect that made you struggle in these other games. It's true. You know what I mean? That, that is was true. a very clumsy way of saying it, but you know what I mean. Yeah, as much as you they they try and say every next game, next game up, you know. No, the it's players hard not have been think thinking about, about this game. Yeah. They definitely have. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so form out the table. How do you feel about the maturity and mental state of your squad pushing for a title for the first time ever for almost all of them? Do you think they have what it takes to um push through the home stretch um that's a good question i am gonna say yes just because i think because of last season sure because of the pain of last season and the failure of last season and, you know obviously we're chasing a different target we're in a different position than the champions league but like we're not chasing fourth we're chasing a title sure but you're saying it's the same mentality but the mentality is still there to like we we failed at a goal at something we were chasing right and it was in our hands so we i would hope that 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 combined with uh you know zinchenko and jesus coming in with like title winning mentality Mm -hmm. you would think you know jaka you know in uh has been in he's an experienced player he's an experienced player he's been in this for a while now um. Yeah, you know, you gotta hope the back the back four, I guess, is kind of the wild card. None of those guys, other than Zinchenko, I guess, like the three, the two center backs though, are super young. Like keeping their heads. Like Saliba did struggle against Tony. Yeah, he had a rough game actually. Yeah, he lost like almost all of his aerial duels against Ivan Tony. Yeah. Which, um, Tony's no slouch. No, not at all. But Saliba's form has definitely been better than that this yeah, year. Yeah, and he's going to have to be better with Ho- like Holland's going to see that, and he's going to sit on Saliba all game. Yeah, that could. Mm, 
That's and, that's actually really interesting. And give him a hard time. As soon as you said that, I was like, ooh, I want to watch that. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's going to – I mean, if if I were Pep, that's what I would say. Yeah. I'd be like, he's struggling right now. Yeah, I don't think he is, Attack though. Attack him. I don't think – I'm not even concerned about Saliba's, like, perceived struggle of the moment. I just no, want to no. see that. Like, that's the test That's a good him. battle. You know, last summer you were already talking about him being, you know, the next Van Dyke. And, or, and um, now – a lot of other pundits are already starting to make that comparison yeah, too. People yeah. are starting to notice him. So I was just like, oh yeah, that's going to be a really interesting test to watch. It's going to be a good battle, you know? a really good battle. Yeah. Like a big physical fast striker. And mm-hmm. he is the same defensively. Yeah. Um, he's smart. He's super fast and he's a, he's a big boy. Yeah. Um, so that'll be, a, I mean, that'll be an epic battle and it's not like Holland can shy away and run to Gabrielle because Gabrielle's no slouch either. Right. He's a big boy himself. So, right. I mean, Holland doesn't hide from anybody. No, he's gonna real. he's gonna be a mountain man and run right everybody. at everybody. Yeah. So it's it's gonna be a good battle back there. Um, I mean, they say if he plays, but I doubt he's not gonna play in this he's game. One thousand percent gonna play. Yeah. Um, I am curious to see where Mikel's head's at as far as the starting eleven, though. I don't think anybody knows at this point. Mm. Um. Do you think – how much insight do you think Mikel has to Pep's craziness? Because Pep is sort of infamous for overthinking these big games. Yeah, he, he tinkers has any flaw. way too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think Mikel has a lot of insight to that? Or do you think he that's a sort of private moment for Pep where he goes off and does that insane, insane stuff? I bet I, – I think him and Mikel were pretty tight. Yeah. It seemed like they were pretty close. You see a lot of the same kind of weirdness in Mikel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one thing that's that is curious, it it'd be interesting to see if he is Pep like in this way because he has um he has been so consistent with the team, right. which Pep always kind of is for long periods. Mm-hmm. But then suddenly Pep will flip it yeah. completely yeah. in big games like this. Right. So it'll be interesting to see if Arteta has that tendency or if he his tendency is to stick with what he knows. Mm. There's some of these guys that have earned a chance in these games, but um, I also can't blame him for putting that 11 out again. No. The 11's gotten us to this point, mm-hmm. and if they're fit enough to play, why not put them out there? Yeah. And they're, they're, if anything, they're going to be more amped for this game than anything because they know how much this one means. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see a similar jump in performance that we saw in Liverpool today from Wolves to Everton, you know? Yeah. There's a, a different kind of motivation. Yeah, when you're playing against a rival yeah, um, in a big game. With stuff on the line, especially. Yeah, you know? yeah, you're going to want to play up to a new a new level. Yeah. And this will be a good test to see if Arsenal can take that step up. And then, uh, looking forward to the weekend, kind of a tough one. <laughs> Not that you're away to Aston Villa necessarily, but that it's the early kickoff on Saturday after having a midweek game against City. Yeah, yeah. Like an intense midweek game against City. Yeah, and then you're now you're away to Unai, who's gonna have a chip on his shoulder about Arsenal. Yeah, he's gonna want to stifle us for sure. That's gonna be a super sleepy early morning game. Yeah, how do you feel about that? That could be. I mean, it's definitely is that a banana peel. It is. It could be. It could be. Unai could. He could do what. Deich did to us essentially yeah um he loves to set up like that um he will have a strategy in place to try and stifle us in some way um, yeah that's and play on a counter that's actually gonna be a pretty interesting game yeah yeah it, it'll definitely it on it looks it'll be tougher than it looks on paper for sure um like you said especially that early morning kickoff i feel like we always struggle i feel like every team struggles in that early morning kickoff we uh, Liverpool definitely do. Yeah. Um, I can't speak to everybody. I feel like other teams do well because they always beat us. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> we always we seem to always lose the early kickoffs too. Um, yeah, but anyway, it's I'm glad to have that game to wake up to on Saturday. Yeah, it's nice. I love when there's an actually a good match on first. Mm-hmm. Get you started for the weekend. Yeah. Elsewhere on Saturday, um, Brentford hosting Palace. I expect them to brush Palace aside. Yeah. Brighton hosting Fulham should be a fun one. That's going to be good. Mm-hmm. That's actually going to be very fun. Two teams in those European places that we mentioned earlier. Really, yeah, great, young, fun. A lot on the line. Yep. Good attacking talents. Mm-hmm. That should be a fun game. Yep, that's a popcorn game for sure. Um, kicking off at the same time um, at the other end of the table, Everton hosting Leeds. 
That's massive, a big massive, game. massive relegation game there. Come on, Leeds. Yeah, do you think Leeds will have a manager in place by then? It doesn't seem like it. I haven't heard any updates on a manager for them at all. No, definitely nothing concrete, just whispers. Yeah. Um, so it's not looking like they'll have a manager by then. Yeah. I guess it is only Monday, so. Um, you know, if, see. if Dice executes, Everton should be able to pull that off. You know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a week of Dice training under their belts. Yep. Yep, they should be able to pull that off. But Leeds, I mean, yeah, we'll yeah. see. It's a big game for Leeds, definitely. Without a manager, it's going to be tough. But they've looked decent so far since he's been gone. Um, Wrapping up Saturday is another interesting one. Um, Newcastle hosting Liverpool. Yeah, that's going to be good. Newcastle, as we said, um, in pretty spotty form. I think four draws in their last five matches. But nevertheless, they're still having their best season they've had in probably 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, how's working is magic. They look great. Um, I guess now the only question mark is Liverpool have just come off this huge Merseyside Derby bounce. We'll yep. see if that was a real improvement or if that was just a one off for the Derby. Yeah. It was just the energy of the Derby or can they do it again? Mm-hmm. I mean, you do have players coming back to fitness. So, yeah. like, that's also. To- you know, it's not a coincidence that you looked a lot better today for that. As yeah, well. that's true. Did I even mention that? Um, the performance looked something. better today, but we also saw the return of um, Firmino, Jota. Um, Virgil didn't come on, but he was a, he was on again. the sidelines. He'll be in the Newcastle game for yeah. sure. But um, yeah, that's a huge game on Saturday. I think that will be a great bellwether um, for the rest of Liverpool's season. Yeah. To see if, Can you if actually make we're the just push gonna back? languish and, and ride it out or we're gonna yeah, get into those European we're really gonna push for those European spots. Yeah, yeah, it's a big test. Yeah. Huge test. Um then on Sunday we've got United and Leicester. Um United in great form. Leicester also have popped up with some huge results lately. Yeah, like I said, against Tottenham, Leicester looked like Leicester of old. Right. Madison and everyone playing playing like they did a few years back. Mm-hmm. Um It'll be a, yeah, that should be an interesting one. Yeah, uh, United can't... haven't looked great lately. No, they haven't. They look, they've looked functional. Is Casemiro still out? Right, this yeah. is his last game out. Yeah, this is his last game out. So yeah, it's that's true. A, that's just a big test for United still. Yeah, this is the last little hump for them to get over without their kind of star man of the season. Yeah, um, and then the re- the weekend is rounded out with uh, Tottenham hosting West Ham. Unpredictable again. Yeah, yeah, could be a two two draw. Last sloppy play. Yeah. West Ham love a London Derby. Um, yeah. Tottenham are just unpredictable. Tottenham are so up and down that I feel like now they're do a good game again, though. Yeah, they might. Yeah. They What's could beat that? them 4-1 or 4-0. You know, yeah. they could crush them. But Wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. Um, you just don't know what you're going to get with Tottenham right now. Right. But overall, I think that's a, one of the more entertaining weekends of fixtures we have coming up this weekend. Yeah, that's a good – yeah. There have been a lot of weekends with a lot of mediocre-ass games lately. Yeah, it seems like they have all the good games have been spaced out. This There's, like, one, one good game a weekend. Yeah, this one almost every time slot has a fun game, so I'm really – I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's be a good weekend for football. Oh, yeah, there was one other thing I wanted to do on the pod. Yeah. I might embarrass myself. <laughs> so, um, it was announced, I think, today or yesterday, uh, Nathan Jones was, uh, was let go from Southampton. Uh, manager of Southampton. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, rock bottom Southampton. And when I read that headline, my first thought was I had no idea that Nathan Jones is managing Southampton. Or if I'm being 100% honest, who Nathan Jones is. Yeah. It occurred to me, I don't, I don't th- I can't think of another time where I didn't know every single manager in the league. And so I want to ask you to run down the teams, I'm not going to look, and I promise I did not do any research other than know that Nathan Jones is a manager of South Africa. Oh, shit, okay, here we go. So go down the teams and I'm and see how many men, if I can call them all out, every manager. Yeah, well, if I want to see if there are any other ones that I don't know. I was shocked to know I didn't know Nathan Jones. Okay. You can go in the order of the table or we can do it alphabetically. I don't care. I'll do order the table, but, okay. well, I mean, you, yeah, you should know the top, all right. top six at least. You would think so. Uh, Arsenal? Um, is it Unai Emery? Yeah. <laughs> no, Mikel Arteta. Okay. All right. City. Um, uh, Pep Guardiola. United. Uh, Eric Ten Hag. Newcastle. Eddie Howe. Tottenham. Uh, Antonio Conte. Ooh, this is going to go interesting. Brighton. Oh, 
Fuck, there's an Italian guy. Deserby? Deserby, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fulham. Um, um, what's his face? The Wofford guy. Um, Marco Silva. Marco Silva, yeah. Brentford. Um, Thomas Frank. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool, huh? Uh, Jurgen. Chelsea. Um, uh, Grant Potter. I actually almost stumbled on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I think, actually, I can't even picture in my head right now. Aston Villa. Unai. Oh, yeah. Unai, Unai, Unai Emery. Emery. Well, yeah. I was like, I, I couldn't picture it in my head for some It reason. is a, a weird one. That's a weird one, so I get it. Yeah. Uh, Palace. Uh, uh, Vieira. Yeah. Patrick. Leicester City. Uh, Braj. Braj is back. Mm-hmm. Nottingham Forest. No fucking clue. Yeah, this one That's I don't think one. I know either. Let's see. Oh, I saw as soon as I saw his face. Where's the name? <laughs> oh, Steve Cooper. Steve Cooper. He's the r- weird, the most British looking man alive. Yeah, that's true. Steve Cooper. I suspected there was one I didn't know. There it is. Yep. All right. Yep. Keep okay. going. Wait, there might be more. There might be more. No, Wolves. Wolves. Lopetegui. Yeah, Lopetegui. Yeah, yeah. West Ham. Uh, Moyes. Yeah, Leeds United doesn't really have a manager. Yeah, right they're now. manager list. They have like interim coaches. Yeah, they're not I'm even not, managers. I'm giving myself a pass on that yeah. one. Yeah, Everton. Um, why am I blanking on Everton right now? Play them. We literally just played them. Just this is me. Them. I should also mention for the listeners that are like scoffing that I'm super high right now too. Yeah, we did smoke a joint before um, and <laughs> during. And this is a fresh appointment. It's fucking Sean Dyche, of course. Yes, Sean okay. Dyche. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bournemouth. Um, I don't know Bournemouth either. Do I? No, I don't. Gary O'Neill. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. I didn't really know that either. Yeah. I think he's an interim manager too, right? Who became a full time manager, I think. Yeah, that would make sense. I feel like he is. That's maybe a very I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Kind of move. Yeah. Promote from within. <laughs> um and then dead bottom we just talked about in Southampton. Southampton. Yeah. Okay. So there were two. I didn't know Burnmouth or Forest. Yep. Right? Yep. All right. I don't think I knew those either. I so. can live with that to be honest. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of managers. Damn. I'm not slipping too much, although I'm slipping still. But like, yeah. there was a time I knew every single player, every squad in the Premier League, and all, all the referees and everybody. I was so obsessive at one point. Yeah, no, um, I definitely am not to that pure obsession level I was at I'm, the peak. I'm but so glad I'm not. Jesus Christ, it's so it was hard. exhausting. It's so hard to enjoy the game when you're that obsessed. Yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah, to be that that deep in. Yeah, but um. Cool. Good stuff. Yeah. Do you have anything else for the pod? I think, I think we're good. I don't think so. I think that was good for this this week. Cool. Excited um, for this this midweek and weekend. Yeah. Um, next episode's going to be a, a fun one. Again, so many fun games coming. A lot out. of things to recap. Yeah. Huge potentially title deciding game on Wednesday, and then just lots of fun ones over the weekends. Yep. Um, Big time stuff coming up. Yeah. So uh, thank you for listening. Enjoy the weekend of football. Enjoy. Enjoy everything. Enjoy life. (laughs) All right. Thanks, y'all. Have a good week. Later. Bye. Soccer. Soccer, Soccer. 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 Situation. Situation.